What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel for Webflow Pros. Today's video we're going to cover some design related content that's been requested on this channel for a while now. Basically people have been asking how do I borrow from design inspiration without stealing the design itself? I'm going to show a little bit of my process for that and my design process for a hero section. So let's dive right in. All right, so for this project, I'm going to pretend like my client's MailChimp. I pulled together a lot of similar dribble shots. This first collection is like a retro style. This next one is sort of a brutalistic style. And this last one is like a web app. And I decided to go with the retro style for this. The next step is to really just add comments of everything we see similarities or consistencies between all of these. So they had no drop shadows. They all had multiple colors. They had outlines around the columns. So when we have chunky outlines like this, it's more playful. And then thinner ones like this are more mature. So I'll probably go with thinner ones. Um, then they use like a grid four to five columns. With this four column grid, we're getting 50-50 splits, perfectly symmetrical. Um, when we do a five column, we're getting these asymmetrical layouts that are really interesting. Some sections are wider than others. So I'll probably do that here. They also had no rounded corners on the buttons. Uh, a lot of just square boxy shapes with some of those offset squares underneath it and really interesting navs. So here we have a top nav with a right nav. Here we have a bottom nav with a left, uh, sometimes just a bottom or just a top nav. And I really like how they're sort of boxing off the logo here. And then a lot of these have like a text on the left, visual on the right sort of layout since we read from left to right. Uh, it's a pretty consistent UI pattern that we can use in our design as well. Um, so I just pulled elements from the MailChimp brand. Hopefully whatever client you work with has really good type, illustrations, photos, colors. Uh, really makes making an art treatment a lot easier. Let's sort of outline where we want things to be. So I'm going to do a top nav just to keep things kind of consistent, simple there. Um, maybe the height could be 100 pixels here. And then I'll also do, to make things interesting, a right nav over here. Some more info. Um, that would span the whole height and maybe the width is 160. So I'm just blocking out where this would go. Then I need my five column grid inside this white space. So I'm going to add a grid. I'm going to switch that to columns. And you'll notice in our examples, they had no gutters here. Um, so I'll probably change the gutter to zero. That way we have no gap in between our columns. And let's go ahead and anchor it to the left. Let's increase the width. We basically want it to align with that nav over on the side. So something like that. And then we can basically fill in all the spaces inside these columns. So um, right here, I'm going to have maybe like a logo. Uh, it's pretty typical to have a logo in this top left hand corner. Um, so I'll just kind of plug that in here and then I need to align it inside the column. I'm just going to drag out sort of a rectangle and align it here. And then I'll also need to align this from top to bottom. And then that looks good there. And then I may start outlining some of these shapes. So like if I create a border here, uh, this is just a stroke or one pixel is fine. It really doesn't matter whatever value I use here. I just need to make sure it's consistent throughout the whole UI. So I'll basically create sort of box off this logo like that example we saw. So maybe a line could live here. Maybe we rotate this line and live over here on this side and maybe this goes all the way to the edge so we create sort of an interesting space here for some sort of element to be um, and then i'll sort of outline this here and then i'll change the opacity of these boxes to zero uh, just so they're kind of there so i can align things to the center of them and that is looking good we have our basic outline so then we need to decide where we want our text and our visual content to be i think i'll have the text over here on the left side and then maybe it would be three columns wide, so it's a bit wider, and I'll save two columns for the visual, uh, which means I'll bring this line down here. And then we can start bringing in maybe MailChimp's headline font right here, and I'll copy their existing headline right here, and just plug that into the design. Um, and then we can basically make it span full width, and I'll hit enter right there. Um, and then we'll scale it down to where it's a bit smaller, and it's basically resting in this space and that looks good and then let's create sort of a button so we can drag out a rectangle we'll add a stroke to this so again one pixel so it matches all this stuff here and let's create sort of our link text maybe this is like 18 pixels so it's a bit smaller and our line height could be like 20 pixels and let's go ahead and set that there um, we'll also center a line and um, let's make it 
Let's try semi bold, and the text should say pick a plan. And then I'm just going to center it up inside this button. Um, that's looking good. And then I'll make a copy of this one, send it to the back, um, align it here, and then use the shift key and the arrow keys to push it down. And I may make this transparent or white. Um, and then let's just align it here. And let's add some of our nav links. So I think I'll leave the nav links anchored to the left, kind of like MailChimp had it. It looks kind of nice there. Um, so I may just drag this in. And our nav links are products, resources, inspiration, and pricing. Uh, so let's do products. Uh, let's make a copy. We'll say resources. Uh, we'll make another copy and do uh, inspiration. And then let's make one more copy and it's for pricing. And then these, I'll probably just leave the regular weight for now. Um, and so let's also tidy them up. So we're spacing them out evenly. Um, and then I may space them out even just a little further, something like this. Um, and that's looking good. And let's select them all, center them up inside this container. Yep, perfect. And then we'll do 80 pixels padding inside this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight should give us an exact 80 pixels. Perfect. And then that's staying aligned within these two columns. Um, that's looking good. I may actually reduce the height and width of this, uh, the padding of this button a little bit. It's just a little large now that I'm looking at it again. So I'll just back this down, make a copy, send to back. Uh, make a white fill color and then align it and let's also align it here and okay we have a basic structure there so one thing we could do is just center up all this content inside this uh, section here or I may actually add some more content down here to fill up some of this space so I may leave this up top and then we can create sort of a line here um, let me drag out some sort of uh, some sort of boxes here to fill up this space and then we'll just create three of them and then that's aligning there let's send them to the back and let's uh, go ahead and add some lines here right on these spaces and let's go ahead and make a copy over here all right and we have that basic setup I'll drop the opacity of these also to zero and okay and let me bring this line over here all right and let's maybe just throw in an illustration here for now um and let's go ahead and plug in some content here so we'll go ahead and make them a bit smaller and maybe we can grab this headline and throw it in here could really do anything in that space it could be like um maybe a picture or just some text um, or illustrations, but let's just see. I'll grab this weight here and grab all this paragraph text right here and basically just plug that in and let's align it to the left. Let's change the width this time, something like so. And we'll set the width uh, right here. Um, and let's do 16 pixels. So it's a little bit smaller, kind of like micro copy for this. Um, that's looking good. And I may back down the opacity a little, maybe 80% is fine. And then I just need to center this up inside this section and make copies. And then let's throw in, maybe we'll use this content here. So it really helps. Um, when doing this, when all the paragraph text is about the same character count, it really makes the design look a lot better. And I can tell they thought about that here as well. So let's plug all this in. If we look at what we have now, there's a lot of space here, which could be okay, but I think I might push this up and also create some columns here. Um, something like that maybe a little bit taller maybe these could be links so we have two of them we copy our uh, font size for our link bring it to the front um, align with these to the center oops like so anchor it to the bottom and let's create some grid lines here let's span this 
far and grab this one and it needs to go this far all right and then these could be we have login and sign up free so let's try that do log in and then let's create a copying one here and do um, sign up free and let's send these to the back and then one thing I may do is bring in maybe a search icon um, they kind of had that anchored here on the right and I think I'll do the same thing here um, our icons need to be a little bit thicker than our outlines um, so that way they stand out so maybe I'll do three pixels and then again same padding so that way we have 80 pixels space right there and then I'll guess I'll put like a hamburger icon in here so we can do sort of this outline and maybe increase the stroke size to be the same as this icon um, create a little bit of space there group them together and align them to the center and yeah it may be a little wide so maybe back down the width and may push them just slightly closer together something like that is kind of cool and we could even make this more interesting by grabbing one of these lines and reducing the width a little bit um, so then we could have kind of an interesting icon there um, and that's looking pretty cool I mean we have our basic setup I think we can also add maybe like a scroll indicator here or maybe it's a progress bar that tracks your how far you scroll down the page so maybe we do like a stroke here and then we make a copy there and this would be like the fill of it so it wouldn't be that wide at first and then the fill color of the background piece could match our background and then we'll thin it up a bit something like that and maybe align it here somewhere to the center of this uh, shape here perfect and maybe we also do social icons down here so our fill could be white we can add a stroke um, something like that and then I have a couple of social icons that I can use in here so like the Facebook icon maybe I'll put it up top and let's see let's grab Twitter and then let's grab the Instagram icon here okay and that looks pretty good um this kind of looks weird how it's not aligning with those buttons i may actually i think i'll just center this up so i'll group all these together bring them up top um put them a little further away from this piece and group all that together and then we'll just center like that and that looks pretty good i think for our initial like wireframe so what i'll do is just push all these up um right here and i'll just make a copy right here and let's go ahead and start art treating it a little bit so this is looking a little funny the space there and one thing i do like about these cards is how there's a different color in each one so i might be able to do something uh similar while also indicating that these are clickable links so maybe i can push down the titles like this and anchor them towards the bottom and maybe we do uh, somewhat of a circle here and we do something like that and maybe make it a little bit smaller add the stroke to it um, and then I'll create like an arrow icon just anchored uh, to the grid line like that and we'll basically uh, push it apart like this and round it off and that kind of gives us an interesting shape we can reverse it and anchor it up and then maybe flip it like a 45 degrees uh, make it three stroke and then group it um, and then I'll put it basically inside here that way we have this basic uh, interesting arrow shape and I may increase the size a little bit center it up and that's looking pretty nice there and then I can just copy these and we want to give each of these a different color um, so if I look at MailChimp's main color 
uh, is pretty bright, and um, I'm kind of leaning towards these desaturated versions here. So I may take a liberty with the color actually, and just pull out a little bit of saturation from this, um, and that just feels a little more mature. And then I can basically set these colors. They have these really nice secondary colors. So like they have this blue I can use, and they have a light green. And while we're at it, maybe we use that light green over here. Something like this. Um, and then here, I may actually remove the fill color there. Either make this like a blue, or a green would draw a little more attention. And then I need to fill in some of this space here. So let's go ahead and create like a rectangle. Um, something like that. And then it's just like a lot of color right now. And also it feels very technical, kind of dry a little bit. Um, so I may actually remove the illustration because there's a lot of just black and white going on here. Maybe I bring in like one of these photos that have a bit more life to it. And then that could go in the container or, or we could even let it break out past the container to add more interest there. Um, that could look kind of nice. And then I'm just going to leave about equal space on top bottom sides. Something like that could be cool. And maybe we try this tan color. And we could just darken it a bit. Eh, it's kind of looking muddied. A little gross. Um, let's select the background color and just pull that down a little bit. Very subtle. And that's just going to add more emphasis to this photo section. Just highlight it a bit more. Um, and then, I mean, that's pretty, like, close to what we need. One other thing I may do is add a bit of texture. Um, so, like, here I have, I noticed a lot of, like, patterns. And then here it has, like, a paper texture. Um, something to give this a little bit more life. And then everything in this direction was flat. And most of my UI is pretty flat as well. So I think it would be okay to break the rule once and just introduce something that's a little contrast. This is kind of old style retro, um, but maybe I add a little modern touch to this with like a gradient or something. So I could drag out an ellipse, maybe make that my green, and add an effect, and I can just blur it out and make it fade into the background a good bit. Something like that, and maybe scale it up and anchor it to the corner, bring it to the back. That could even be cool, um, may blur it a little bit more. And then I may add somewhat of a gradient to this instead of a solid fill. And maybe that fades from the green to the yellow. That could be cool. And then I'll add just as much green in it as we have yellow. So even amounts kind of, something like that. And I mean, that's looking really interesting. I'll probably remove this fill color on that. And then that's looking kind of cool. So we just preview what we have now on the live thing. We added a little bit of texture to this, a little um, interest to it through the layouts. And if you compare it to what we started with, yeah, it feels similar. The art direction, the style of it's similar, but it's also kind of its own thing. We just basically took the idea of these or the style of these and applied it to a brand new brand uh, with different typefaces, different layouts, filled in some of these columns with different grids and boxes, and we have a basic layout that we can use. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye.